Scorpios, and welcome to your horoscope for April 2020, where this month, Scorpio, I really like the forward motion and the permission to take things forward and maybe even get some answers and have a couple revelations that ultimately help us move forward and bring some good things into the month. As well, we're going to have Jupiter and Pluto come into the first of three conjunctions that they will make this year. They're going to do it out of retrograde. And even though we see this happening in your third house, because Pluto is one of your ruling planets, we also know that this is of benefit to you as well. So you're going to be beginning to make a leap here for the first First time in 13 years that'll set you on a different course. We'll check in it on June and we'll see how it's come to culmination in November. So really a neat kind of month on our hands. So let's just jump in here and get to it, okay? First and foremost, we want to take note that as we look at the month, we still got a lot happening in the bottom of the chart. These first six houses happening here. So this is the Northern Hemisphere, of course, if you're not if you're not in the United States, right? This is going to be a different hemisphere for you. But at the bottom of the chart, this means there's a lot of foundation setting happening still. <clears throat> These are still ideas and um, concerns and beliefs and actual foundation setting that you've been working on for the last handful of months. Now we do have Venus and Uranus above the horizon line and the sun is going to jump above the horizon line as we get to the 19th of the month. And this is a good omen for you because when it comes to the top of the chart, it is not stronger than the bottom of the chart since the majority of the planets will stay down here. So you will keep setting foundations but it's almost as if you've been planning and doing things a little bit in the dark. And as the sun and the planets start to move this way, it changes your social life and it will also change your possibilities for interacting with people who can help you with things like your career or places that you'd like to go, um, experiences that you would like to have. So this will certainly be a turn by the time we get to the 19th of the month to something changing in that social life for you, especially your career since the sun in the general is the ruling planet of your career house, okay? Now, with having Mars and Saturn down here at the very beginning of the month and all month long in your fourth house, what we know is, first of all, Mars is action and energy and movement. So this is literal boots on the ground. You are in motion. You are taking assertive action to make some decisions around your fourth house. Because it's traveling so closely, especially the beginning of the month with Saturn, what we also know is this area is being, it's getting serious here, right? Saturn coming into the energy of Aquarius, Saturn comes to raise the vibration and take you to the next level in that area of your life. But usually what it feels like first is Saturn comes in and he takes a look around, look around this area of your chart in your life and he says, hold on. Some of these things have to go. They can't stay. We can't continue to do these things this way. So in your fourth house, home, family, real estate, property, women in your life, connections to ancestral lines and things like that, you could have started to see some shifts. Maybe someone moved out of your house. Certainly this is the energy of a breakup or something like that coming to the table. I also feel like personally when Saturn is there, we have these many revelations of what we would even like this area of our lives to look like at the next level. So this could be a lot of what you're considering, but certainly in some way, shape or form, your home life has been a little bit more busy and will abundantly stay that way for the month, okay? Now on the third, we see Venus, who's been at home in the energy of Taurus, moving up into the energy of Gemini, beginning to light up your eighth house space. Now Venus, wherever she goes, because she is our smallest benefic planet, she brings benefit. She wants to bring harmony. She wants to bring health. She magnetizes this area. The eighth house is the house of joint resources. Um, so this could be maybe your partner has some money coming to them. You get some good news about your taxes, about insurance, something like that. Certainly, Venus is also not just about finance and not just about value, but also about relationships. So in your eighth house, has something been going on in your fourth house, in your foundations, in your thinking, in, in how you're feeling, your emotional life, and it's taking you to a new place um, in your relationships? There's depth. There's intimacy. The, there's the physical act of sex that happens in this eighth house area. Is there depth? Is there beauty? Is there something delicious coming from this area? Now, the other thing that I think of is the eighth house can also be a house of our deepest fears, or we've had a trauma or a belief or something that's been happening for us or has happened in our lives. And as Venus comes here, she's saying, it's okay. 
let yourself off the hook a little bit. Let's grow past this. And it almost is like it cracks you open a little bit. And you're like, I'm really interested in this. I would really love to heal this. I would really love to experience this. And Venus will definitely give you some help um, up in that eighth house. Now, on the same day, at the same time, we've got Mercury and Neptune down here in your fifth house in conjunction. Now, I love these two for being highly creative, right? You're on hyper thinking here, but you can't really think it through. It's almost like you have to feel it. There's a lot of emotional intelligence. There's a lot of intuition that's going on in this particular conjunction. In the fifth house, this is the house of children. This is the house of projects, hobbies, new beginnings, your own voice, your self-expression, right? Definitely some speaking up, but... Mercury and Neptune together here also create an energy of foggy energy. Like you're not seeing it for exactly what it is. You're maybe deep in the emotionalism, deep in maybe the intuition, but you don't have all the facts and the answers with this particular energy. So I would tell you whether it's making decisions around your children, a project, a job, a romance that maybe is in your life, be gentle with yourself this day. And I wouldn't make any really big decisions because you may be in the emotion of it. And by lacking too much of the fact, you make a decision that later down the road actually is something that doesn't come out in your favor. So just give it a couple days if you can let that pass. Okay. On the fourth, we have Jupiter and Pluto making their first of those three conjunctions. Like I said, it hasn't happened in 13 years. So think back 13 years ago when these two were dancing together in your life. What did you take on that you died off in some way and you became something else and then you leapt forward? You had this expansion out in your life. You would have been at the beginning of something new, a new cycle that ultimately would have brought you some expansion in your world or definitely some different experiences that brought you wisdom, right? Which means they might not have all been very comfortable, but the wisdom you have on the other side of that is absolutely pronounced and beautiful in your life today. Well, that's what these guys are doing here. In the third house, this is some kind of communication. You're putting something solid in place. Now, I'm thinking third house, they keep seeing documentation in some way, shape, or form. So maybe you're writing a letter, you're drawing up that contract, um, Certainly the third house being opposite the ninth, this could have something legal um, going on for you, but it could also be whatever you're doing here, you're driven, you're moving it forward and you are setting a solid foundation under this particular communication and it is usually successful. And if anything needs to be adjusted to the success of the communication, the siblings, the documentation, the buying, the selling the house, the car, whatever it is, if anything needed to be reviewed, you would do that again in June of this year. But right now, while these are both out of retrograde, take advantage of this day. This is your supercharged energy and a way to jump yourself forward. Make sure you check out the Jupiter-Pluto video that I did so that you can understand that conjunction even more deeply for your own chart. Now on the seventh, we're gonna have a full moon happening in the energy of Libra, opposite that sun over there in the sixth house. Now, a full moon says that something has to be ended, acknowledged, and adjusted. And one of the things that I keep thinking of for you here with this moon is, first of all, because it's the 12th house, and that's a house of, of assimilating, of absorbing, a culmination, and also allowing things to transition from one thing to the other, this full moon might be saying, okay, look, we need to just sit down for a minute. We need to just slow down for a minute and take a break so that we can act like a Libra, so that we can see what things are in balance for us, which things are out of balance for us, right? The 12th house is things that are hidden. We've got Venus in your eighth house. Are you having a revelation about yourself, Scorpio? Something that you didn't know about yourself, maybe a way you like to make money, something that you're interested in. Your fourth house has gotten serious. Right? Is this, you know, do you have a relationship in your life that maybe you, you didn't know something about it and secrets or information or new information has come to light that moving forward in this next four weeks, you'll be able to put into motion, into action. It's almost as if I feel like this moon brings a little bit of a spiritual awakening and an information awakening as well. But the idea is, where are you in balance? With the sun being over here in your sixth house, the other thing I would ask you is in your daily routine, in your health, in your mental wellness, where are you out of balance? 
right? Where do you need to have some grace and let yourself forgive yourself, forgive other people so that your health can stay on track? This will definitely be a wonderful, wonderful time for you to see what's hanging out in that 12th house and end it, make an acknowledgement to it, or allow the adjustments to come to this area so that you can have peace flowing, not just to your health, but also to your daily routine and the rest of your chart, okay? And that moon, just to be specific too, that moon is going to be at 18 degrees of Libra. I didn't want to leave that out. Now, the other thing with that moon that I have a concern about, and I will address it in the, in the moon video as well, is that this moon is also set to the tune of a Mars-Uranus square. So we've got Mars here in your fourth house and Uranus who's up here in the seventh house. As these two square, your fourth house and your seventh house take each other on. So... Something, what it means essentially is we need a little bit of caution. You need to act with caution here, but something is feeling like it's being put under pressure or under strain or is asking for your attention. Mars and Uranus, sometimes when they interact, this is a warring energy. So I would not be surprised if something in your home or your relationships feels like it's a little bit on fire with this is set to the tune of a moon. Maybe that's bringing information to the surface, but what it's trying to do is get you to take action in a foundational level relationship. Bring that information to the table and make the switches because if you will do that, what it opens up is the opportunity as the sun rises above the horizon for you to have the right kind of relationships in your life. And those relationships being connected to the sun will also connect you to business, to finance. Maybe you even get to meet influential people. But first, you maybe have to see where this is out of balance. So I wouldn't be surprised if you see the home and the relationship life in a little bit of tension or somebody that you're in a relationship with, um, even if it's an ex wife or an ex-business partner it's in a little bit of tension but there is revolution that is trying to happen okay all right on the 11th we see mercury being done here in the energy of pisces and he's been here for quite some time but moving on for a brand new experience up here in the energy of aries now mercury and aries we are speaking forcefully we are making forceful decisions right aries is also an energy that is not afraid to get it done via a little bit of conflict so again, here in the sixth house, when we have the sun and Mercury together, the sun is motivated, Mercury's up here, he's ready to have conversations, make decisions, take actions. So one of the things I love here is look at your daily routine, look at your health, look at those projects, look at the things that you've been taking on and see where you can make some impulsive uh, initiative taking level decisions for yourself as well, because maybe that area has seemed very quiet, maybe at work, maybe in your health and in your routine, maybe you've been in quarantine, so you've been feeling pushed inside. What can you do to, to raise this level, to take it to the next level, right? But what you do here and some decisions you make could actually turn out to be financially beneficial or career beneficial or what you're doing in the world beneficial to you in just a couple weeks. On the 19th, the sun moves away from Mercury, moves up here into the energy of your seventh house. This is important because the sun brings light, heat, life, motivation, and a lot of vitality to this area, right? Now, the sun, again, in the general, the sun is the ruling planet of your 10th house, the tip top of your chart. So that is your career. That is your reputation. The sun coming here wants to bring you relationships. Uranus is vibrating this area of your life. It's maybe relationships you haven't interacted with. And these are people who socially may have prestige. They may have power. They may have influence in some way, shape, or form, Scorpio, that even though maybe you're having to be offline, this can be very influential to you. You're having conversation that is a strength that is to your favor, and it can also help raise you financially. So I think it's a wonderful month to look at where finance and relationships and value through relationships comes together because it's not all about money. Sometimes these significant relationships come into our lives and it's not about making money, but they just raise the value of what we think, we feel, we know, and how we show up and work as tactful, beautiful human beings to the surface. So this is going to be a really nice movement of the sun here. Now, the other thing I think about is 
literally just drawing a new relationship or you have a relationship in your life and you'd like it to go to the next level you'd like to breathe some life into it the sun will definitely definitely be willing to do that in the relationships in your world on the 22nd to add to that we're going to have a new moon happening over here so plant those seeds of intention um what would you like what fresh start do you want in these relationships where do you want to go in your career and even if you don't know who you can travel with to get there, ask the universe to show you, bring me guidance, bring my eyes, bring my sight, bring my intuition to seeing these people. Let me speak up for myself. Let me share my ideas. Let me write that book and get it out and be willing to publish it and join with people who are going to help me grow this area as well. Remember, Saturn is still over here in Aquarius. So it's the fourth house. This is a foundational piece that you're bringing into your life, but it's going to come through a very social means. So don't discount that at all at this moon. Okay. On the 25th, Pluto is going to go into retrograde and I'll be making a separate Pluto in retrograde video so we can really get into the juices of it. But what we need to know for right now is that as Pluto retrogrades at 25 degrees of Capricorn, it'll retrograde all the way until October. He'll come out at 22 degrees of Capricorn. But a Pluto retrograde here in your third house You've, you've already seen this. You've been looking at it. It's that communication. It's that documentation. It's the relationship with the sibling. And as Pluto retrogrades, he's going to say, let's, let's review what needs to be transformed. Let's look at what needs to evolve here. What needs to die off in this area so that it can live in a different way. Now, this is the energy of Capricorn, right? This structure has likely been in your life for a long time or at least for the last year and now you're taking an opportunity to go back in and look and really Pluto is your ruling planet so you're going to be moving a bit more slowly in the undercurrent of what is driving you right? You may find some new drives. You may find some ways of communicating that are not working for you and are not to your benefit. You may have a contract in place in your life and it is not benefiting you, but it's going to work in a low and slow underground kind of way. As Pluto being one of your ruling planets, you may feel it. A piece of you may feel like you're ebbing and flowing a little bit and it's okay to allow pieces of you to die off, to allow these new relationships and your new evolution definitely to come forward, okay? Now, as we end the month, Mercury is going to move up here and join the gang in the energy of Taurus as well. Now, Mercury and Taurus, we're speaking a little bit more slowly, right? Communication has slowed down just a little bit, but Mercury in Taurus is business savvy. They are both business savvy. They want long-term success. They want to create conversations and relationships that can endure, can stand the test of time, that are dependable and reliable. So what relationships are in your life that you can have these conversations with you bring a sweetness to it when mercury is in the energy of taurus as well now keep in mind we also had a moon that happened in another venetian ruled energy so you may have information that was presented to you here that changes the course of a conversation you're having in relationships so i feel like it's a beautiful month to focus on the fact that your chart is continuing to get more and more social the foundational level things you've been working on are now making their way out into the light of day and as people and the relationships around you catch them they can help them catch fire and move forward as well keep an eye on the third when we see mercury and neptune together and keep an eye on that full moon in libra on the seventh as well because that mars uranus square is certain is certain to put a little tension somewhere but whatever the tension is you need it in order to break free and move towards the next evolution okay all right, Scorpios, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I sure love you a ton. Hopefully you're taking advantage of your spring equinox gifts. That's in the description box down below. I love you and I'll see you next month. Bye.